She represents the eastern part of San Diego County and is in her sixth term as supervisor. Supervisor Diane Jacob joins us this morning. Thanks so much for being here. Good morning. It's well, a pleasure. Yeah, you have a lot going on. First, let's go ahead and talk about San Onofre because recently the board asked the federal government to remove and relocate all of that nuclear waste being stored there. First of all, why did you guys have to do that? Well, all you have to do is remember Chernobyl and Fukushima and what happened there. And San Diego County is no place to store spent nuclear fuel. We want it removed and relocated as soon as possible. Think about it for a moment. We have 3.1 million people in San Diego County, and just to the north of us, there are millions of people that live there. This is not an area to put spent nuclear fuel. So we're asking the, uh, we're asking the federal government to step up to the plate do what they promised many, many years ago, and that's find a location that is, there's no population area. If you look at where San Onofre sits right now, it's between railroad lines and the ocean and a major fault line. This is a disaster waiting to happen. Now you said as soon as possible. Realistically though, what are we looking at here? It's gonna take time. Uh, the federal government since the 1980s has said that they will find a location that is safe for spent nuclear fuel, yet they've failed to do that. There was talk about Yucca Mountain, but there are other locations too where you do not have major population centers. In fact, there's areas where there is zero population, much safer than keeping spent nuclear fuel along the coast of San Diego County in California. And let's go ahead and, and switch over to another initiative that you worked on recently here, an alert system for missing people at risk, specifically for people with Alzheimer's. Tell us about how that works. Well, we want everybody to sign up on their smartphones, alert San Diego. It's really easy to do. And the reason for that is if we look at Alzheimer's folks in particular, six out of 10 people with Alzheimer's or related dementia are going to wander at some point in time during their long period of time with the disease. And the Alert San Diego, what it will do, it will alert people that there is someone that is wandering. This is all about saving lives and we can enlist the community to help save the lives of people who wander. I think if you remember back, Sally Estabrook and Julian, she wandered off. Unfortunately, she was not found alive. This could have saved her life, perhaps, and other lives. But we need people to sign up for Alert San Diego. So just Google in Alert San Diego, sign up, and you'll be part of the team to save lives. So Alert San Diego, is that's a website that people can go to? Yes. And it sounds like a great idea, but why wasn't this thought up or brought up earlier? Well, we've had Alert San Diego for other reasons, and we have Ready San Diego on wildfires, and we're talking about any kind of an emergency. So Alert San Diego is not just for Alzheimer's patients, it's for anybody at risk, and that's something new that we put online for Alzheimer's. And speaking of the at-risk population, you're also working on uh, protecting seniors from scammers and crooks when it comes to financial crimes. What are your efforts there? Well, unfortunately, financial crimes against seniors is on the rise. And what we want to do is we want, we're trying to get out the word of what to be aware of. I'll give you an example. There's the grandma scam. And it's a call that comes in, and, and it's from out of the country usually. And it'll, it'll come in to someone who is a grandma. And in this particular case, it was somebody that called and said, your grandson is in South America. He just ran over a toddler. And if you don't send me 65000 immediately, he will be in a South American jail for many, many years. And so they actually had somebody on the phone that sounded like the grandson. And that's how realistic these scammers can be. And the grandmother sent the money, unfortunately. It was her life savings. So what we're trying to do, and there are other examples too that people will learn about at, at, the, at the workshops we'll be putting on. But to get the word out, if somebody calls, on the telephone and you don't know who's on the other end, don't answer it. Have an answering machine to screen your calls, but don't answer it. Mm -hmm. Secondly, if you receive an email and you don't know who it's from, delete it. 
And then third, if you re receive something in the mail and you didn't ask for it, just shred it. So delete it, shred it, hang up. Those are the three things for people to remember to avoid these scams. Mm -hmm. Now I know you, you're hosting one workshop. Are we hoping to make this a regular thing in the future? I'm hoping that we can have a series of workshops throughout the county. The one that we just had last Wednesday is a sellout. I say sellout, but it's free. And there's lunch too. So mm -hmm. people are interested and it's important to get the word out again to save the life savings of many senior citizens that are being unnecessarily preyed upon and ripped off. Mm -hmm. Free and lunch too, that free always and, helps. Free and lunch, you can't beat that. And let's go ahead and switch over now to a serious topic here. Um, sexually violent predators being what you call dumped in the East County. Where do we stand on that? Because I know we talk to you regularly about these people coming to relocate in your district. Well, I, I will keep raising the issue as I have along with the community. And Gary Snavely is a good example of why the system is broken and the law doesn't work that allows these sexually violent predators go back into the community. Gary Snively, he broke his probation. He was in and out during the uh, civil commitment process out of the state mental hospital, back and forth, back and forth, and finally, he's back in a state mental hospital, locked up for good. Don't let him out in the first place. This is very costly to taxpayers, much less expensive to keep them locked up than to let them out into the community, which is a danger to people in the community, particularly children, and also it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Well, where would they go? I mean, and when it comes to their sentences, they can't be locked up forever. Where would they go? Where can well, they, they should, settle? In my opinion, they should be locked up forever. But at the very least, they should stay in a state mental hospital. Maybe there's a step down facility that could be constructed by the state. This is a state responsibility. The state government, our state officials need to step up and make sure that sexually violent predators, who are the worst of the worst, should stay locked up for good in some kind of a facility, not let out into the community where they're a danger to families and they change the lifestyle of people who live in those communities and neighborhoods. And lastly, I must ask you, recently the board agreed on a more than $300,000 settlement to the former employees of your colleague, Dave Roberts. Any thoughts on that? Where do we go from here? This is a really tough one for the board. It put the board of supervisors in a very, very difficult situation. The statement we issued speaks for itself, but the difference between what happened recently and the severance that was offered up, that was just a severance of somebody that was going to sever from the workplace. After the three employees filed claims, claims are a precursor to a lawsuit. And so in the best interest of taxpayers, even though unfortunately taxpayers shouldn't have to pay for this, but a lot less than over a million dollars to defend. And then also, if we lost, it could have been a lot more than a million dollars. So we, t we made a business decision and we settled. Great, well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you for being here this morning. We'll be back next week with San Diego's Newsmakers. I'm Melissa Masiha, 10 News.